Let's take a look our, at our notes here on roots. Um, you've got some lesson objectives here to kick things off. You actually got five of them, which is quite a few. You may not feel like you've mastered all of these things by the end of the lesson, but as we work our way through uh, the assignment and we have bell work on these things and we get ready to test, there should be things that by that time you feel like you can say you can do all of these things. I'm not going to read through all these right now. I'm going to let you guys read through those on your own um, at some point and then we'll talk about them in class as well, but they're not going to make a whole lot of sense right now until we go through our vocabulary and some of the practice problems. So we'll revisit them in class. You've got an introductory problem here that I want you to be thinking about, and we may talk about this one in class as well. It says a checkerboard is a large square that is made up of 32 small red squares and 32 small black squares. How many squares are along one side of the checkerboard? So be thinking about that. Maybe you can come up with the answer and like I said, we'll probably talk about that and revisit that one in class. Let's take a look at some vocabulary, though. We've got five vocabulary terms here, so quite a few th to, uh, to get things going here and uh, begin to understand what we're talking about for this lesson on roots. So first one, a rational number whose square root is a whole number. We're talking here about a perfect square. And then it has this explanation sentence here. 25 is a perfect square because its square root is 5. So when you take the square root of 25, you get a whole number. That makes 25 a perfect square. One of the two equal factors of a number is its square root. And it has this little explanation here. If x squared equals p, then x is the square root of p. And it gives you this example here, a square root of 144 is 12, since 12 squared equals 144. So 144 is the perfect square, 12 is its square root, because you take that, you square it, you get 144. The symbol used to indicate a positive square root is called a radical sign. A radical sign, and I want you guys to draw this in with me here. A radical sign looks like this. It has kind of a little lip on it. It goes diagonal down, diagonal up, higher than it was before, and then straight across. And you can put a number inside there, and that means we're looking for the positive square root of that number. Um, a rational number whose cube, cube root is a whole number is a perfect cube. It gives this example, 27 is a perfect cube because its cube root is 3. In other words, 3 times 3 times 3 equals 27. So when you take a cube root of a number and you get a whole number, that makes this number a perfect cube. One of the three equal factors, one of the three equal factors number is a uh, uh, cube root. And it gives this little equation here. If x cubed equals p, then x is the cube root of p. The cube root of 64 is 4 because 4 cubed equals 64. So, so 64 is the perfect cube. Its cube root is 4 because we take 4 times itself 3 times to get 64. What we've got now here is, is I want you to create this chart with me. This is going to be uh, something we reference we're going to create the, the perfect squares. So up here are the square roots. And we're going to just number 1 through 15 up here in a minute. And, and the, 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 uh, perfect, the uh, perfect squares will go in this one below it. So for example, 1. Um, if you square 1, 1 times 1, you get 1. So that's not real exciting there. Um, but basically, if you have a square that is made up of just one square, its side length is 1, and it's also made up of just one square. Um, but this will get more interesting here as we go along, and I'll continue to draw a few of these here. We don't have room for a lot of them, but I'll do a few of them here. And we'll do some, maybe some more in class. Um, so the next one, we're just going to number again 1 through 15 here, so the next one would be 2. 2 times 2 is 4, 
4 is a perfect square because its square root is 2, is a whole number here. So this, if you were able to actually create a square, draw this in 2, please, that had side lengths of 2, um, you would do this side length times that side length to get the, the amount of squares in the middle there, which is 4. So um, side lengths of 2 make a square with 4 there. Okay, and then we have the next square root is 3. 3 times 3 is 9. So 9 is the perfect square. 3 is its square root. And we can create another square here. Two lines straight down, two lines over. So you have side lengths of 3, but a total of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 that make up this square. So it's actually, this is a visual representation of these perfect squares. With 9 squares, I can make a perfect square. With 4, I can. We'll talk later about this in another lesson, but with 5 squares, you can't make a perfect square. With 6, you can't make a perfect square. But with these perfect square numbers, you can actually take that amount of squares and make a perfect square with it. Like for this one, number 4. 4 squared is 16, which means I should be able to make a perfect square with 16. So I'm going to split that in half, and then split that half in half, and that half in half. Split in half this way, split this in half, and split that in half. That's not perfect, but we do have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 squares altogether. And, and we can continue to make these pictures. We're not, we're not going to have space for this. But we can continue to make these pictures for 5. 5 times 5 is 25. 6. 6 times 6 is 36. 7. 7 times 7 is 49. 8. See if you can do some of these before I do them. 8. 8 times 8 is 64. 9. 9 times 9 is 81. 10. 10 times 10 is 100. 11. 11 times 11 is 121. 12. 12 times 12 is 144. 13, this is where things can get a little bit tricky here. 13 times 13 is 169. 14, 14 times 14 is 100, and then these two digits switched. It's 196. And then the last one that I want you guys to know is 15. 15 times 15 is 225. So down here, we have all of our perfect squares through 225 and what their square roots are. These, you're going to have to know. You're going to have to have these memorized because to estimate square roots that are between some of these perfect squares, um, we're going to have to estimate square roots of numbers that are between these perfect squares. We're going to have to know what the perfect squares are and what their square, square roots are. So you may know some of these, some of you may not know, but you're going to need to have those memorized. Let's take a look at a few things you're going to see throughout today's um, practice problems that you need to know some, what some of these symbols mean. So if you see, I want you to write these with me here. Square root is 64, like that. This is just, again, calling for the positive square root. So I want you to write, find the positive square root of 64. That's what that wants you to do. So that would be 8. Because 8 times 8 equals 64. So if you see this, that's what it's wanting you to do. If you see this, we have a plus and then a minus underneath it, and then a square root sign. That means it wants you to find both the positive and negative uh, square root of this number. So we have 1.21. It wants you to find both square roots. of 1.21. So every number actually has two square roots, has a positive version and a negative version because as we learned um, a little bit ago, you can take a negative times a negative and give you a positive. So we could take 
For example, for this one here, we could take 8 times 8 and give us 64. But we could also take negative 8 times negative 8 and give us 64. But if you see the symbol, it's just asking for the 1 square root. If you see this, it's asking for both the positive and negative square root of 121. So if you have your calculator with you, and hopefully you do, but if you don't, you can look off of mine here. We're going to type in the square root of 121, 1.21. So you have to press second, and the button to the left of the 7, 1.21. We're going to see what number times itself equals 121. It's 1.1, but we're going to list both of them. You can either list it like this, plus minus 1.1, or you can actually list them separately and say 1.1 and negative 1.1. That's another way that you can, you can handle that. So if you see that, it's looking for both a positive and negative. Sometimes you'll just see a negative sign in front of the square root. That's just asking for the negative square root. And I'm going to put a fraction in here because we're going to have to work with fractions sometimes. So if you see like the negative square root of 25 over 36, all you have to do to find the square root of a fraction like this is take the square root of the numerator and take the square root of the denominator and write the new fraction once you've taken those square roots. So this just means find the negative square root of 25 over 36. So that would be, let's see, um, we just want the negative of, of this. So we're looking for a negative fraction, we know. The square root of 25 is 5. The square root of 36 is 6. So this is what it's looking for for your answer. And we didn't circle this up here. Let's do that real quick. Okay. So we've viewed that so far. Let's take a look at this, this last one here you might also see something like this where it asks you to take the square root of a negative number. Now this is different than what we saw up here. This was asking for the negative square root of this. Remember every number has a positive square root and a negative. This is asking for the square root of negative 16. So what exact number times itself equals negative 16? Well, 4 times 4 equals positive 16. And negative 4 times negative 4 also equals positive 16. So that means that there is no number that we can take exactly times itself that will equal negative 16. So if you see a square root of a negative number, we write no real solution. Because there's nothing that we can take times itself to give us a negative number. As we learned the other day when we were working with multiplying and dividing integers. All right, let's, uh, let's flip over to the back side and let's try to do a few examples here before we have to cut things off here in the video, and then we'll do some more when we get to class. But um, to start things off here, it just says find each square root. So let's do some of these together here. Um, like for some of these, we won't use a calculator. Some of them maybe we will. It's like the square root of 9. What number times itself equals 9? 3. 3 times 3 equals 9, so 9 is a perfect square. Um, let's do another one here. Negative square root of 0 0.81. Now we're just looking for the negative, and so because we're just looking for the negative there, um, we can go ahead and put a negative out front for our answer. And I think it will actually allow us to do this on the calculator too. Negative second square root 0.81, and it's negative 0 0.9. So 0.9. This is just 81 with the decimal moved over a couple places. We know the square root of 81 is 9, so that makes sense. Um, number 3, we're looking for the positive and negative square root of 49 over 144. So, let me drop my square root sign down a little bit there. Uh, so we're looking for both the positive and negative. I'm going to list them out as two separate ones. You can do plus minus that, or you can, or you can just write them out as two separate. But remember, we're going to take the square root of the numerator and square root of the denominator. The square root of the numerator, square root of 49, is 7. The square root of the denominator is, is 144 is 12. So it's 7 twelfths and negative 7 twelfths. We have to have both answers there. All right, let's just do, we'll do number four real quick and then we'll wrap this up. Um, the square root of negative 100. 
the square root of negative 100 is no number times itself that equals negative 100. So this one is no real solution. All right, we will do more with this in class. We'll work our way through some of these other practice problems, but that gives you a start of understanding some of the symbols you'll see and uh, a beginning understanding of roots and how they work.